they ran and they left the people because they figured, oh, they don't know nothing. They ain't gonna do it. They ain't gonna survive. But General Mitchell came in, who was an, uh, an astrologist. He was a general, but he came in and when he saw the conditions that the people lived in, he said, no, this won't do. He had a heart. And he called back to the military office and got them to send lumber down. So they were living in shacks. Mm -hmm. And um, to build them a home, not shack. Mm -hmm. And then he, the, the soldiers, some of them still had that mindset of they could take from the people. Mm -hmm. yeah. He mm -hmm. separated them. So they stayed up at Fort Howell, those mm -hmm. soldiers. The others were here, mm -hmm. but they protected this. And then the people, he let them start, and a preacher came down, became his helper, and um, came down, and it became a town. It started out as an experiment, because he didn't know what was going to take place with it. The experiment came into a town. When he passed, what, two months after he got everything kind of rolling, he got the yellow fever. Mm -hmm. And the people tried, you know, with all their help, the, the moss, the, the pine, you know, home remedy, so mm -hmm. that's what they did, but they couldn't save them. So to honor him, they named this the first self-governed town of Mitchellville because it was self-governed. Mm -hmm. They governed this town. They ran the store. They sold their pies, the women. It was 238 children out here. The, they, General Ozenby made it mandatory for those children to go to school. You know, at that time, it wasn't that. Mm -hmm. They had no schooling. And that school on the corner, that little wooden building, Cherry Hill, that was their school. But turn your body and imagine, because remember, the roads. Everything came in on the waterway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right there. So that's where the school was. That's where the homes and stuff. And then it came back this way. Mm -hmm. The store, and if you know the word barter, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they would barter. Mm -hmm. And they would just trade out to get what they needed and everybody ate good. You smell that cornbread, that fat back coming out there, and that opal stew and that gumbo coming. Everybody, raccoons was falling out the trees and the, the ravens was flying down on their heads. This is no joke. And then we got uh, 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 one of the black priestess ministers to come out and do libations. And once she did the libations out here, everything calmed. Every, we started finding things. Yes, we started finding things, and then we started telling the story. And see, like I said, nobody knew that Harriet Tubman was out here. So our children had to learn Harriet Tubman just didn't free slaves. Harriet Tubman was an activist. Mm -hmm. She was the teaching that she did because she couldn't read, but her father taught her how to learn from signs and from the earth, from the stars from the stars, and it's so much history. I mean, I I have stories that I tell about her in church. I tell the story, I'm the storyteller of Mitchellville. Mm -hmm. Know that you're on, everyone is standing on sacred holy ground. Mm -hmm. And it's this, he protected it because through the marsh, no, no boats can come in on it. The ocean, when you go down there, you see the ocean is out, but there are no boats that come in here. When they fought, when the Union and the Confederates fought, they couldn't come here. The people could stand there where Tony Morrison benched when everybody get down there. If you stand right where Tony Morrison and just look straight out at the water for 72 hours, that's where the battle was fought. But they could not come on this land because it was protected by God.